Good morning, Tennessee Valley. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. My name is Matt Ryerson. I'm your Tuesday morning host. This is my co-host, Matt Tolbert. The news to hurt your Hulus. Hu- hu- <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Too bad this is live. This is my co-host, Matt Tolbert. The news to your Huey Lewis. Very nice. That lost some momentum yeah, kinda there. Yeah, it kind of did. I, I just kind of <laughs> lost that. Forgive me, people. I apologize. It's difficult to say Huey this early in the morning. <laughs> it is 6.32 a.m. Uh, and we appreciate you this, joining us on this cold. It's, it's not even crisp. It's, it's kind of cold. Yeah. Not in, the, not in here, though. It's like 73 degrees in here. 73 degrees, because I, I know that, that our, our fans are, are constantly concerned about our welfare. If you are studio. out in the cold right now, just know that we are warm and comfortable. <laughs> if your utilities have been shut off, <laughs> I'm sure you're not watching the show. Yeah, that's so it doesn't true. matter. How was your weekend, man? It was good. It was good. It Yesterday was, was Halloween. Yes, it was. Yeah, I was hoping to see more students uh, with costumes on, but I only saw one. I saw Batgirl. Batgirl here at Cleveland State? Mm -hmm, At Cleveland State, saw Batgirl, but that was it. I didn't see anybody else, which was kind of disappointing. Did you do anything with uh, your daughter? Well, not specifically last night. There was a trunk or treat. You know, the Baptist churches, a lot of Baptist churches do trunk or treat. But we didn't actually get to go to that because I was so late getting home and my wife was so late getting home. And she's only three, so we're not really thinking. She doesn't have it figured out yet. I don't think so, no. But we did go to a Halloween party. Really? Um, over the weekend, yeah. How was that? It was, it was fun. I, I I ate a severed leg. A severed leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah. What it really was was it was just like a like a garlic bread roll. Oh, and it made it look like a leg. It kind of looked like a leg, <laughs> and then stuffed That's it good. with uh, like uh, like red pasta. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was disgusting looking, so I didn't eat that. But then uh, there was a bunch of other stuff that was there. But we had costumes, and I don't I don't do costumes. I, I, I do not do costumes. My wife actually got me a, a clown nose and clown makeup. Yeah? I said, heck no. Absolutely not. You're but a clown she did, every day of the week. She did get me a, like a hockey mask, like those serial killer hockey masks. Jason from Friday Yeah, like Jason, yeah. Yeah. The only problem I found with that was, though, that um, I couldn't wear my glasses. And so I was kind of a blind serial killer. <laughs> Ineffective. Which is really ineffective. Right. right. I mean, that's the thing. Is So I put my glasses over top of the hockey mask. <laughs> and I went as the nearsighted serial killer. That's good. I like that. The only problem is, is if my victims ever caught me, they'd knock my glasses off and then they could get away. <laughs> but uh, my wife, she wore a pink wig and pink eyelashes. And then she wore like normal clothes and a turtleneck. So it was like, at first, like if you look at from here up, she almost looks like dare I say, a prostitute, but from here down, she looks like Mormon. So I called her the Mormon prostitute. She didn't like that too much. <laughs> I suppose not. No. But my daughter went well, as a bumblebee, and she was absolutely adorable. Oh, well, there you go. So. There you go. We also did the, uh, we did, we actually did, uh, we went to the first Baptist event here in town, the Fall Festival. Fall Festival. I drove by there last night before going Which home. is massive and so well done. Mm-hmm. Very spread out. Lots of blow up games. A lot of people there too. Oh yeah. I saw just a huge crowd. Uh, Cameron Fisher from the Greenway and uh, Richie Stevenson, Lake Forest Middle mm-hmm, School mm-hmm. principal. So the whole crew was, I mean, it was just a massive crowd. Uh, but it was really well done. It was a great time. Uh, but even better, and it's hard to beat that, this weekend, my family and I, we went to Disney on Ice. Oh, my daughter went there uh, with my wife on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. This is is really cool. I had never done this. I mean, Disney on Ice has been around for mm-hmm. decades, mm-hmm. I suppose, and my my daughter, the princesses came out mm-hmm. and did their skating thing. She was just enamored. Mm-hmm. And my son, the Toy Story, the little green soldiers came out and marched and everything. He loved that. Mm-hmm. He loved that. So that was that was a pretty cool event. I was excited. Yeah, that was the second year for my daughter. They took her last year, and she was blown away by the princesses. Right. And then this summer, we were able to go to Disney. She got to see the princesses up close and talk to them. So... When she went to Disney on Ice this time, it was like, oh, this is old hat, Dad. You know, this is like, (laughs) it's like I've done this before. Here's what happened. But apparently she was so just enthralled the whole time. 
Uh, see, I thought you would have, going back to Halloween, though, I thought you would have gone, gone uh, to make up for all your transgressions. I thought you would have gone as an Amish man. Ah, that's, uh, that was actually um, a thought. Yeah, as penance or it something. Was, it was a thought, but I couldn't get a beard. Um, I wanted to go natural. Oh. And that's going to probably take me... And that's the best you can do. 75 years <laughs> to get this, yeah. It's no shave November, but you shaved this morning, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't shave this morning. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> I did no shave. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just I kidding. shaved yesterday. I apologize. So. Nice. Nice. It is 637. We're going to take a quick look at the weather for you this morning. As I mentioned, it was frosty out this morning when I came out to the truck. I actually had to let it warm up and scrape some ice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, frost off the windshield. Uh, but it's going to be sunny and a beautiful day today. High of 67, which is perfect fall-like weather. Tomorrow is almost identical, sunny and a high of 67. And Thursday, we're going to have a 40% chance of showers uh, and a high of only 59. So 30, Thursday looks a little... Uh, cool and wet, uh, but enjoy the next couple days. Looks, looks spectacular. Yeah, 60 is all week long. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a couple of uh, events coming up that I wanted to highlight. Uh, first of all, today, of course, is Restaurant Tuesday, which is always exciting. One of our favorite parts of the day. Is, is lunch. Is lunch. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Any day of the week, really. But Yeah. But today, uh, uh, local restaurant Panera Bread mm -hmm. is, is doing Restaurant Tuesday. Oh, that and sounds good. I haven't been there in a while. It is, but but I, it's not it's not lunch. So if, you, if you're making lunch plans, you can still go to Panera. It's wonderful. It's always wonderful. But they're actually doing their dinner oh, from 5 to 8. Okay. And 5% okay. of their proceeds are going to go to the United Way and United Way agencies. They get more business good. at dinner time, I bet. I would assume, yeah. yeah. So that's... That's great for uh, Dan and Janie Cook, who, who are owners of that Panera here locally. So we appreciate that. Uh, be on the lookout for that uh, if you, you're looking for dinner plans. Also, Southern Heritage uh, does this thing annually, and this, this is a pretty cool thing. They do uh, a food drive, and they are asking uh, what they call it is Cleveland Helping Cleveland, uh, and it begins today. Uh, it's through Friday. Uh, and, and the goal of this is to replenish a lot of the food pantries uh, around town. And, and you, as you probably know, you know, most United Way agencies, or a lot of them, have food pantries. They, they work with the population that uh, from month to month may have struggles uh, filling up the pantry. And uh, the Southern Heritage Bank uh, does a drive. And literally, they get a, tract a tractor-trailer load of uh, non-perishable goods, so mm. canned foods primarily, but anything non-perishable. They'll fill up a tractor trailer, they bring it over to the United Way, and we have our agencies come over, pick up anything they want to fill their pantries up. And, you know, this includes the Cleveland Emergency Shelter, the Domestic Violence Shelter here in town. A number of different organizations come over and pick that up. Mm. And it's just a real blessing. Uh, in fact, we were talking to Signal Centers, which works with children with disabilities, and they say it literally cuts their expenses in a third. So they're able to do more programming uh, because they don't have to go out and buy these foods to help their families. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's a good program. So Southern Heritage Bank, all you have to do is drop by there. There's a number of local companies and schools that uh, are, are participating in this. But uh, just swing by Southern Heritage Bank. If you're not sure where that's at, it's right on, uh, just down by Tractor Supply and Key Street. Uh, swing by there. It's the it's got like a steeple on it or something. A steeple? So, yeah, it's not a steeple, but it looks like a steeple. It's a big bank. It's beautiful. Some people do. Some people treat banks that way, <laughs> and they should. And they should. <laughs> well, we have a very special show for you today. We have two great guests. We have Brenda Hughes from the Bradley Initiative for Church and Community, and Andrew Lockerbie from Bradley County Schools are going to both be joining us. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. 
Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. That's what Jennifer says. We'll see. Welcome back. <laughs> Uh, we Jen would just like to apologize. Uh, Jennifer's <laughs> from Canada, and uh, sometimes this stuff happens to me. It Canadians, does, apparently. it does, which is just north of Iceland. Yes. For those of you who aren't familiar with the map, geography, Canada, north of I I Iceland. Yes. yes. Da, da, yes. as they would say there. Yes. And uh, Jennifer was up late at the Halloween party last night. Ah, the block party? Yeah, so mm. any uh, production problems uh, are, are ultimately going to be Jennifer's fault. Yes. Uh, we will blame her for that. Yes. So. But more importantly, we have a special guest here today, Brenda Hughes mm. from BIC. Brenda, welcome. Good morning, and thank you for having me. It's no, well, thanks well. for joining us. We appreciate okay. you being here. Well. Uh, for a lot of our guests, uh, and I just threw out Bic there, and it's probably on the b bottom of the screen, assuming Jennifer's got that up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bic, what, what does that stand for? I mentioned it earlier, but, sure. but what is it? What do you do? What's the history behind it? Wonderful. Uh, well, it's the Bradley Initiative for Church and Community. Uh, it is a uh, community development organization. We've been uh, going now for 13 years in our community. Our goal is to address the root causes of the social, economic, and cultural issues in our community. And we do that through uh, a listening process. We listen in the community, one-on-one -on -one listening interviews, and we ask the community what they feel are their, the concerns and the needs. And then we take that information and we drill down and try to find the root causes behind that and then we come up with programs to address the root causes. And uh, we've gathered thousands and thousands of one-to-one -one interviews asking very simple questions, but very important questions like, uh, what do you like about our community? What concerns you about our community? What do you see are the needs? And what do you see are the wa uh, some ways to address those needs? But more importantly, we ask a very pertinent question, which is, what are your hopes for our community? And it really gets people to thinking when, you, when you're asked that question, what are your hopes for our community? And so what BIC does, it unites uh, the community together through the churches and other community organizations, businesses, and then we get together and uh, create projects like uh, Starfish, which is an in-home parent education program, and we're very grateful to the Bradley Memorial Hospital Funds for helping with Starfish. Uh, you know, the uh, Inspiring Tomorrow's Leaders Today Youth Leadership Development Program. We have Bridging the Gap Mentoring Program. 
We launched a community development credit union. Uh, we now have a uh, community foundation. Cleveland has now has a community foundation. Uh, it is not uh, big. It's already on its own. It's uh, spun off. And some of these projects, what they do is they actually spin off and become entities all their own, like the credit union. Like Reach Adult High School, you know, began. And, uh, and a lot of people may not even realize that we have an education institution here, mm -hmm. Reach Adult High School, mm -hmm. which originated through the listening process in Dude. BIC years ago. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what's interesting about this, and I can say this because he's retired now, but Bob Taylor was opposed to this originally, he was. Uh, but he said he'd be willing to give it a try. Maybe you could give a little history to yes. the Reach Adult High School. Yes, that was a wonderful uh, pro project we worked on. Uh, the Reach Adult High School, the goal was to provide uh, an opportunity for people who had dropped out of school, adults, to go back and get their high school diploma. And we're not talking about a GED because there was a wonderful GED program going. And so we, we launched it uh, right here on Cleveland State Campus. And it, was, uh, it still is a great uh, thing. It has converged now with the uh, GED program, and it's called the uh, Reach Adult Education Center. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the Bradley County School System. Uh, Mr. Taylor uh, didn't see the need for it, but he was willing to go along with it. And then, interestingly, after uh, it took off, he was one of its most uh, vocal proponents. Yeah, uh, which is a real testament <laughs> to, to Bob and, and his... Yes, Bob was great, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, took it to the board, and the board approved it. And, uh, you know, we started out our first year, we were planning to start with 15 to 20 uh, students to have a pilot kind of program. Mm -hmm. And we opened enrollment and 52 students wow. enrolled. And within the first semester, which is, you know, what, 15, 16 weeks, seven adults received their high school diploma. That is they awesome. They were that close. You know, a lot of people have had to drop out of school for different reasons. Right. And some only like a little bit, you know, a credit or half a credit. Some of them like three or four credits. Uh, those who lack more credits, like, you know, 15 or 20, uh, is probably the best to go through the GED program because you actually have to do the seat hours uh, mm -hmm. in Reach Adult High School. And, and you actually earn your full high school diploma. Yeah, this is a real, real diploma. Mm -hmm. This it is, is not, it is. not uh, mm -hmm. you know, some yeah. gimmicky thing. This is a real high school diploma. Yeah. And some, uh, I guess around 200 adults now have received their high school diploma. And it's a full-fledged school in right. the Bradley County School System. Right. And for years it was right here on Cleveland State Campus and it was such an encouragement for people to go on and do the, uh, you know, post-secondary education because, I mean, they were sitting in one classroom and seeing students across the hall. They were getting their high school diploma and the, and the students across the hall were getting a college degree and they said, you know, I think I can do that. Right. And when they graduated, they just, uh, either enrolled or right. got other education. So it was, it's real exciting. That's a great example mm -hmm. of some of the things you've done. You've also, uh, one of my favorite programs, the Starfish program. Yes. Maybe you t could talk for a moment about Starfish. Oh, yes. We love to talk about Starfish. Uh, Starfish is an in-home uh, parent support program, uh, parent education program that uh, helps parents to understand the developmental needs of their children. And uh, it's for parents with children prenatal to five years old. A lot of young parents are just nervous about being parents, and I think I heard you say one time when you brought your child home, uh, they didn't send an instruction package. Yeah, I so, missed that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, many times developmental delays are not identified until school starts, and when that happens, then it's very difficult to make good progress on that. But if they're identified early, uh, uh, they can be referred to different thing, resources. Uh, they do vision screening, hearing screening, developmental screening, uh, social-emotional screening, all kinds of ways, and they work with the parent, and the parent actually uh, develops their own goals for their children, and Starfish is just kind of a guidance and a support there. Corinne oh. Freeman <coughs> runs that program. Yes, Corinne Freeman is the director, and she's doing a splendid job. Yeah, we've had her on the <coughs> show before. We have. <coughs> One of our very first guests. Yeah. Was she really? She was. <coughs> well, she was great. I liked her. And there yeah. are two additional teachers. So there's mm -hmm. two teachers, educators, and then Corinne. 
Yes. It was also an education. So you have a great track record, uh, a Thanks great so history Lord. with the credit union, uh, Reach Adult High School, Starfish, ITLT, mm -hmm. as you talked about. So what's the future hold for BIC, and, and what events um, do you have coming up? Well, wonderful. I'm glad you asked. Uh, we're commemorating, excuse me, <clears throat> 13 years. 13 years. Wow. 13 years of uh, uh, the community working together. And we are getting ready to launch a new project. Uh, and we've done a lot of research. We've spent uh, over the past 12 months really drilling down and we did the listening process. We did a community mm -hmm. forum mm -hmm. and then we drilled down to try to find the root causes. Um, the uh, greatest issue that was identified through almost a thousand interviews was the growing impact of drugs, gangs, and crime in our community. And so since BIC is not a part of the judicial system, the judicial system takes care of the drugs, gangs, and crime, we try to, we're trying to look at the impacts. And some of those impacts, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, broken homes, you know, children's education being derailed, uh, incarceration, you know, long-term illnesses, uh, money being spent for these kind of things that could be spent on more positive things in the community. Right. And so uh, we're looking at uh, developing a project around that. And so we're going to be talking more about it at the banquet. We're having our uh, annual fundraising banquet, and this is going to be the topic. And we're going to be talking more about how we're going to address uh, the impacts of drugs, gangs, and crime in our community. The banquet will be Monday night, November the 7th, uh, at 6.30 at uh, the DeVos Center on Lee, at Lee University, the beautiful, beautiful campus. Beautiful facility. Yes. And uh, we have a very special speaker. Uh, he is a renowned person who actually grew up in our community. And uh, uh, it's Dr. Uh, Patrick Daugherty. And uh, he uh, grew up here, went to Lee. And uh, something, excuse me, <clears throat> something I always like to tell about Patrick is he was an incredible person. Uh, he didn't plan to go to college. He graduated high school and that was going to be it. And, uh, but uh, his girlfriend was going to go to college. So he said, well, I guess if I'm going to keep my girlfriend, I better go to college. <laughs> what a good reason. <clears throat> so he started a college at Lee and Dr. Lois Beach. Uh, really inspired him in education. And the neat thing about Patrick, uh, well, one of the neat things, there's so many, but uh, he went from a bachelor's to a Ph.D. in biochemistry. Wow. Now, I get that. Bachelor's, Ph.D. in biochemistry. Then he uh, went on and got his M.D. He's an oncologist. And uh, then he went on to Gordon-Conwell and got his M.Div. Wow. Uh, really, you know, just by a mentor, you know, inspiring him in education. Uh, <laughs> and he has started a cancer clinic. Uh, he w lives and works in Alabama, but he spends a tremendous amount of his time in medical missions uh, in Honduras and other third world countries. Mm. And so uh, Patrick is going to be a really, really uh, inspiring speaker. I encourage everybody to come. Uh, uh, call the BIC office, 559-1112, or jump online at uh, www.bicc-inc.org, BIC-inc.org. Sorry, <laughs> we're, we're vying for places here. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, please come. Tell your friends and neighbors. And... Uh, Come and help support BIC. Well, congratulations. 13 well, years of, yes. of great work, and we look forward to Great's another support. great 13 years yes. uh, of additional work. Mm -hmm. And once again, that, that phone number one last time if somebody's interested sure. in the programs or the banquet mm -hmm. next Monday. 559-1112. And we want to thank the community because BIC wouldn't exist. BIC is the community working together. Mm -hmm. It's not the BIC office, but BIC is the community. Right pull together and working together. And we praise God for all that's happened. And thank you. Excellent. Well, thanks, Brenda. We thank appreciate you. you being here. Thank and you so much. stick with us. We'll be right back. We'll see if Jennifer's ready.
Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program, Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Live, we'll see. Welcome back. Welcome back, <laughs> Tennessee Valley. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is the segment that we like to call the things that matter. <laughs> and my name is Matt. While firefighters in Pittsburgh were at City Hall getting flu shots, the trucks they parked outside were getting parking tickets. The trucks were parked for about five minutes Wednesday in permit-only spaces reserved for City Council members. <laughs> our hard-working firefighters in our cities... Putting their lives on the line. ...had to go get mandatory flu shots because they have to stay healthy for if there's a fire. And the cops ticket them. Yeah, I'm guessing this is one of those cities where there's a little bit of a rivalry between firefighters and police Oh, you officers. think it's like big city politics? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I cannot imagine that happening in Cleveland or Bradley County. Never. I, I'll just put that out there. <laughs> so, uh, Speaking of parking tickets, a woman received a parking ticket issued for $44,500. <laughs> It turns out an officer accidentally noted the ticket was issued in 208 <laughs> instead of 2008. 208 BC. <laughs> so apparently, apparently the computer system figured, well, if it was issued in the year 208, the cost of the parking ticket would be $44,500. You know, a couple things here. <laughs> I, I gotta admit, for for let's say that parking ticket was issued in 208, which I know. Don't write in. I know that's not possible. <laughs> Eighteen hundred years ago, <laughs> yes. the the overdue fees really only calculated to forty four thousand. That's really not that bad. It's not. I mean, that's, that's like, really not that bad. You know, a nickel of you know a month or something. I don't know. That's not that much. So, but police know. fessed up. And the woman's husband took care of the now $144 violation, which seems a bit trivial, considering. You know, you know what I like about this? That the police, like, had to fess up. I know. It's like, I mean, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, they tried to collect $44,000. Uh, 
sir, you parked your boulder here in a no parking zone. Pterodactyls only, you know. <laughs> and I know pterodactyls weren't you know, <laughs> going right in. I'm just a joke. <laughs> Those were in the Cretaceous period, huh? um, but still, $144 is nothing to sneeze at for a parking ticket. No, but can, compared to the 44,000 she figured, see, I think this is a ruse by the police. That's I think a scam. Yeah, they it's say give you $44,000, and mm-hmm. then people's like, "Oh, what are you talking about?" Oh no, just 144. It's only 703 dollars. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, that's, that's so really much better. And, and, yeah. <laughs> Okay, this, this next one is a little strange, um, and this is not for Halloween. Which seems appropriate. A fully grown man who wears diapers and sucks on a pacifier has been cleared of alleged social security fraud and wants the senator who attacked him to apologize. Stanley Thornton Jr. has a medical condition known as paraphilic infantilism, infantilism, excuse me, that leads him to pretend to be a small child as a way to cope with abuse he suffered as a child. He doesn't do this for Halloween, but I thought it was Halloween-esque. I, yeah. <laughs> you don't know what to say. No, I don't. I have rendered Ryerson speechless. Yeah, that doesn't happen. My, uh, my very, very most important day when I can do that. Uh, <laughs> Fort Pierce police allegedly found a crack pipe inside a Bible. Oh, well, there you go. Belonging to Tanya Sutton, a 43-year-old woman, they had already busted on charges of carrying an open container of malt liquor. Here's the thing. If you go to all that trouble, how ironic is it? If you go to the, all that trouble to hide a crack pipe in a Bible, that you're going to walk around with an open container of liquor, which is what's going get to you, get you Well, my question is, did, is it one of those... Uh, where they cut out the pages to be able to put it's it in there? Like, yeah, it's just... kind of like that movie. Um, what was that movie called? The one with Rob. Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. Where he yeah. cut out the little spot and they put the hammer in yeah. there. Yeah, And then in the, the Bible. And then the, 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 uh, the warden Blasphemy. comes by, grabs it, and then he hands him the Bible back and he says, Salvation lies within. And he used that, that little hammer. Right, too. right. It was a good movie. One more. It was a good movie. All right, uh, here's, another, here's another criminal uh, issue. Police in Florida arrested a 45-year-old woman after she allegedly attacked her father for this, get it, refusing to share his potato salad. <laughs> Karen became very angry that she could not have the potato salad and began throwing and breaking items. She then grabbed a large kitchen knife and began threatening her father with it. <laughs> he defended himself with a chair... <laughs> And hid himself in the bathroom. Uh, you know, first off, this must be really good potato salad. <laughs> it's fantastic potato salad. Second, uh, you know, is there a point where she's got this large kitchen knife threatening to kill her father that he says, okay, have the potato salad that she calms down? Or are we too far past that now? Um, no <laughs> way. Oh, okay, put the knife down. Here's your potato salad. And the thing is, is she didn't need to threat. He was 82 years old. <laughs> it's it's it. like, just take the potato salad. You don't need to use a knife on the guy. <laughs> oh, he can barely lift the chair yeah, and defend himself. I'm visually picturing this with, the, he's got the chair like a lion tamer. Back! Because he backs into the But he's holding a bowl of potato salad in the meantime. All righty. Those are... My name... My, excuse me. My name is Matt, and those are the things that matter. Oh, I did have one other thing. What? What, you have a thing that matters? Kim Kardashian. Oh, I heard about has, this. Has filed for divorce. 72 days after she got married. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, our hearts are breaking. Totally. About Chris Humphreys. <laughs> and apparently her husband, Chris Humphreys, who's a basketball player for the New Jersey Nets, found out because he was watching TV and it was TMZ. Oh, man. And they were like, Kim Kardashian <laughs> files for divorce. He's like, that's my wife. Well, here's, what? The, here's the thing, and this is, this is the thing. That's terrible. They had a wedding that was broadcast on the E-Chain. It was everywhere. This wedding was the wedding uh, of the century, or I don't know, maybe that was William and Kate. But anyway, they, they, it, was, it was this huge ordeal, and they got tons of money for doing this wedding. And now, 72 days later, 
You know what would have been great? If they would have contractually required them to film the divorce as well. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Although if you, want, if you see them interact, Chris Humphreys was kind of a jerk to her. Okay. She doesn't deserve that. <laughs> she does. She's a beautiful, a young beautiful okay. woman. Okay. She doesn't deserve <laughs> a jerk of a husband. Marriage counselor, Matt Dolbert. I'm just saying. All right, folks, we have great guests coming up. Andrea Lockerbie from Bradley County School. Stick with us. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. Good day, Mike. Good day. Good morning, Tennessee Valley 709 on this crisp, cool Tuesday morning. We're going to take a quick look at the local weather. It's supposed to be a beautiful day today. Uh, we're looking at highs in the high 60s, uh, sunny all day tomorrow, almost identical, high 67. Uh, and then Thursday, we might get a little rain, might be a little cooler, but next couple days look beautiful. Yes. So get out and uh, out and about if you get the opportunity. But right now, we have a very special guest, Andrea Lockerbie from Bradley County Schools. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Thanks for having us today. Thanks for having me early this morning. <laughs> did I just say thanks for having us today? Yes, you did. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for having us today. It's, it's, I'm it's, not the only one who flubs up on this show, there everyone. There you go. Can we rewind that? <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, Andrea. We appreciate you joining us and ha being here. Um, you are, your position with the schools is coordinated school health director, correct? Yes. Okay, tell the people a little bit about what that is and what you do. Uh, coordinated School Health, uh, basically Coordinated School Health is a program that connects health with education. And it was started about four years ago, four or five years ago in Bradley County Schools uh, because of the health crisis we have with our students. Um, childhood obesity, all the increased pressure on our students for test scores and how we can work together to do what's best for students. It, this is really actually an amazing program. Uh, it's, it's something, obviously, uh, and, and I've seen your presentation before, the childhood obesity rate is a very serious issue. 
the amount of asthma and all those obesity related illnesses is, are growing uh, and you guys are having extraordinary success here locally and in fact uh, in part you're here to announce some really big news yes uh, we recently received a federal carol white physical education grant and what that means is that we'll be bringing a lot of funding and a lot of programs into bradley county schools to improve not only the physical aspect of our students, but the nutrition aspect and the training and lots of things. So good things happening for our students and for our communities and our parents. And this is really, uh, this initiative started with some state legislation, which was great. Uh, and, and the state budget has been tight. Mm -hmm. So it's been critiqued very closely by our state legislators about whether this is going to man maintain funding. Uh, and they've made what I believe a really good decision. They've maintained that funding, and you all have shown that it, you've been good stewards over those funds. Uh, a big part of this program is the whole PE for Life, which is, I know, the title that you've done here locally, but it is a national program. Maybe you could take a minute to talk about that. Okay. Uh, PE for Life is a national nonprofit organization, and how PE for Life started in Bradley County Schools is through the uh, Bradley Memorial United Way funds. We received a grant and we were able to go to a, um, a training. There's four academies in the nation. We took a group of 12, including some, a board member, some administrators, and got to see nationally what PE looks like and what it could look like, not only um, from the physical aspect, but from the nutrition aspect as well. And we came back, started implementing some changes and brought in some equipment, training, and things like that. And from that, we have gotten lots more funding. And, and you were talking about um, the legislators and, and passing coordinated school health, which has been about five years ago. And return on investment is significant. In five years, in our school district, we've brought in about $1.6 million wow. in cash and in-kind funds for our students and our community um, to improve the health of students. And we're parents sitting here, and nothing's more important than our children's health. And right. you know, we want them to excel in the classroom, but if they're not healthy, nothing else matters. You know, right. if, if, if babies have temperatures, I don't care what their test scores are that day. I want them to feel better. Um, I want them to be physically fit when they grow up. I want them to live a healthy life. Um, so back to PE for Life, what happened when we came back is we, we started doing lots of more programming, uh, gaining support, expanding that out district-wide, and uh, the response was phenomenal. We started bringing in more funds, which um, also allowed us to apply for another grant, um, that, which was the federal grant. We applied for it three different years. Uh, we finally got it this year with the only um, school district in Tennessee to receive this federal grant. And um, it's a lot of money. It's about 576000 this school year. Wow. It's mm. scheduled to be a three-year grant, of course, with the, the budget and the federal budget, you know, Right now, we know we have the bulk of the money comes year one, and that's mostly in the form of equipment and training. Wow. Um, and also, in the, in the process, PE for Life, who we've worked with on a national basis, has been very impressed with Bradley County and the area that we're in, and they have asked us to be a national, one of their national training academies, and we would mm -hmm. be the fifth in the nation. There's no representation in the southeast southeastern United States. Wow. So it's, it's a good compliment to our school district to... Um, to our PE teachers, to administration, um, and it's, a good thing for our community. Yeah, you're a model, essentially, and, mm -hmm. and they're going to bring people here to see how it's done, mm -hmm. which is quite extraordinary. And like you said, the return on investment, just cash has been extraordinary. We've more than whatever the state poured into it locally, we've more than brought that back in through grants and other resources. Uh, but the real return on investment, as you said, is what the impact it has mm -hmm. on our children. Which is not just exercise but it's also nutrition mm -hmm. so you probably have a pretty contentious relationship with halloween i guess <laughs> <laughs> everything in moderation yeah, everything, ah, uh, there you go good. i like good but now nature. now matt mentioned the obesity and i've seen your presentation before as well what when he said we talked about the obesity rates for children what's the what's the issue here what, what are we dealing with well, in, in Bradley County Schools, we have about 39% of our students that are either overweight or obese, mm. and the, the way we get those numbers is through uh, measuring height and weight and calculating body mass index, and 
we screen students in grades K, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 9. And basically that gives us a baseline and it allows us to watch the data and see how we can change things and what's working and what's not working. Right. And we do that for the whole state. Basically that's about the average for the state between 39 and 40 percent, which is not good when the adult population, 60 to 70 percent of, uh, of adults, are overweight or obese. And mm -hmm. uh, the commissioner of health has said, if, if if obesity was a cancer or it was something overtly that people saw as a threatening thing, you know, all hands would be on deck. And um, but the, because it's not something that we think is as urgent. Um, you know, a lot of people step back from it, and you know, it's a, it's a sensitive thing, and I, I respect that. I, my background is nutrition; I'm a dietitian, and I respect that. But I also see what these kids are going to be facing when they're 30, 40, 50, um, in much earlier years than some of the adults that we see now. So let's just type two diabetes, cancers, um, uh, heart disease, some things that we don't want to see our children deal right. with. Right. Right. And obesity leads to those absolutely, major diseases. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But one thing that has come out with the research that we've really, really been focusing on in our school district, and it's really exploded over the past five to ten years, is the neuroscience and the way the brain works and the way the brain learns. And we know that students, young children as, as in toddlers, can ha show pre-Alzheimer's conditions if they're um, obese. Mm. And the brain, um, the brain was made to move. Our bodies were were crafted to move and the brain works better if our bodies are moving and exercise first helps our brain and a secondary byproduct is to help in the rest of our body our heart and our lungs um, just like if you any of us have sat in a meeting and about 20 minutes into it we're zoned out thinking about something else the brain hasn't moved right and you know and it was interesting you shared this research at a recent meeting I was at uh, and you talked about the impact of movement and learning uh, and that you've incorporated that into some of the classrooms. In fact, my son, who's a kindergartner at Prospect, uh, has the, I don't want to say bouncy balls. Stability but ball. Stability balls mm -hmm. as chairs. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk about that small implementation. I know that's part of PE for Life. Yes. One of the things that we talk about in PE for Life is that, that um, incorporating movement in, in learning and it being okay as a teacher. And good, teach, good teachers are doing this anyway. We may not have had the fancy neuroscience and to, the words to say it, but uh, sitting on a stability ball engages the core, which engages the brain for learning. And with small children, they're moving all over the place. So you put them on the ball, they're automatically engaging their mind and their core. And they, I've seen in a lot of our schools, they'll use the stability balls to do math facts or say spelling words or count to 50, but they bounce 50 times. Well, you know, you know, as some parents have said, and I've had a lot of parents come up to me and say, well, when I was a little child, my mom said, go run the stink off and then come back. Basically, that's what they're doing in right. the classroom, and their, their brains are ready to learn. It's a much calmer environment. But we do this in our secondary schools, too. It's not just an elementary thing. You know, our high school students are in 90-minute blocks. 90 minutes is a long time yes. for our students. Yes. You know, and as parents, we've got... To, to, to help them and let them know that it's okay to move. It's okay, our bodies were made to move, and you know, if, if that's gonna help them academically, then by all means, we need to be supporting our students and our teachers and saying this is okay. Um, one thing that I uh, say is, you know, we're racing to the top in Tennessee. Um, if we're gonna race to the top, our students have to be fit enough to climb there, physically and emotionally. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. And good nutrition, good physical activity, social, emotional health, it all has to do with our education. It's all well, tied. And, and you speak of social and emotional health. I teach psychology, and and one of the things that we we know is that relationships are built better through activity. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to go, it's better. And if you're going to go out on a date with somebody and build a relationship, don't go to a movie. Go do something active because that tends to build mm -hmm. relationship better than just sitting. Dating so. advice from Matthew Tolbert. <laughs> you learned it right here. All you single folks out there. Don't go to the movie on a first date. And those are the things that matter <laughs> right there. Andrea, uh, if some <laughs> of our viewers are interested in hearing more about PE for Life or want to talk to you more about the program or even how they can go get involved in our schools, I know there's a lot of volunteering going on. How do they get a hold of you? What's the phone number? Uh, our phone number is the administration office, and it's 423 4760620 or you can get online at www.bradleyschools.org. Um, 
please, you know, parents, please call us. We, we, we are there to support your children, and um, I have two children in the school district as well, and um, all the schools in this county are our kids. And right. We, we're, we, Bradley County's got a great situation in that we've got greenways and trails, and we just want to expand that. We want to make the healthy choice, the easy choice for our community. Um, we've recently put in um, seven walking trails and um, slated to put one more in this month. It makes me happy. I see parents. I see them bringing their kids out, their strollers. It's a place to go. Yeah. You feel better. Um, it changes the environment of our community. We, uh, we have one at Prospect that is really active, even before dawn. I, I mm -hmm. see people out there, and, and then at Oak Grove Elementary, which I drive by all the time, is packed mm -hmm. with community members that get out on these trails. And those, those are open to the community, that, yes. that you folks out there that live near one of our schools that has a track, feel free to get outdoors and get busy. And that's, that's a good lesson for us all, not just our kids, but for all of us. But, Andrew, we really appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Hey, can you stick around for another segment? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, stick with us. Uh, we'll be right back. We ask that of all our prayers. Would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Byron Winters with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Contact me for all of your business insurance needs. From general liability to workers' comp, commercial auto, and business umbrellas, Landmark Insurance has you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at seven o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. <laughs> Jennifer says mics are up. Mics are up. Welcome back, Tennessee Valley. It is 724 this morning. We want to take a quick look at your local weather. Hopefully you're getting ready for your day uh, and uh, ready to head out the door. It is going to be gorgeous. It is going to be a high of 67. Tomorrow, same high of 67. Thursday, a chance of showers. Uh, here in the studio, for those who are concerned, we're at a comfortable 70 degrees now. Yeah, it's cooled down a little bit, yeah, which, is, nice. which is kind of nice. Yeah. Did, did Matt, you know, today is All Saints Day. All Saints Day, yes. You're familiar with the Catholic Church. What does yes. All Saints Day mean, do you know? I believe it's uh, the Day of the Dead, right? And it has we celebrate all the all the saints who right. have passed on. Right, right. Yeah. I think you have to be dead for five years to be a saint. November first, which is why fame? which is why a lot sure. of people celebrate Halloween, which is Hallow's Eve. Correct. Which is the night before the Day of the Dead. The day of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. 
history lesson here on Matt and Matt in the Morning. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, just a quick reminder, today is Restaurant Tuesday. Uh, so if you head on over to Panera Bread tonight, actually, tonight. between 5 and 8 o'clock, 5% 5 of all the proceeds are going to go to the United Way and our agencies. PE for Life, a program like that, benefit from those donations. So I like to pick two there. Oh, yeah. Get the sandwich, half sandwich and soup or salad or whatever. You know, I never do this, and you'll appreciate this, but the tuna salad, which is fairly tuna healthy. Tuna salad. I never do this in a restaurant, but tuna salad at Panera is outstanding. You know, I bet it is. I, I prefer the broccoli cheese soup. Macaroni and cheese. Have you ever had the macaroni oh the and macaroni and cheese? I get that from my daughter, and then it's my daughter has right. to bite me off. It's not even right. I know <laughs> it's not even right. Uh, also, the food drive begins today over at Southern Heritage. It's a great way to stock the pantries of our local agencies who are in such great need. Uh, so, if you have uh, some stuff in your pantry, or you're heading to the grocery store, even better, just grab a few extra things, green beans or whatever in cans, non-perishable. Uh, grab them, throw them in a the bag when you get a chance between now and Friday. Swing by Southern Heritage Bank over on Key Street and help fill some of our pantries. Uh, things uh, to watch for. What, what are you going to watch? Anything interesting coming up? Well, I mean, I just love all of everything. The World Series is over, so it's we're not right. watching that anymore. Um, you know, I, I've been watching the show Walking Dead. Oh. On, on AMC. <laughs> That's just wrong. Uh, it is. It is terribly wrong. Uh, it's a zombie television show. Yes. It is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you shouldn't watch it, but I do. I do. <laughs> I, I am really into Person of Interest. If you've not checked this out yet, you need to check out Person of Interest. Uh, I believe it comes on uh, CBS. Yeah. But it is a fantastic show. Andrea, anything you're watching? Well, guys, I... I just don't watch a whole lot of TV until because it's so late before I get in bed. But she's every... like exercising. <laughs> yeah, exercising and preparing healthy meals. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for being on today, Andrea. Yeah. Making us feel good. Yeah. Everybody loves Raymond. That the run the reruns uh, reruns at night oh, would yeah. be my favorite. They one right after the other. You know, talk about reruns. <laughs> Whose line is it anyway? You know, remember that show? Yes, I love that show. Comes on at midnight on ABC Family. You know what I saw is coming on also, what? and you guys can appreciate this. You're, you're children of the '80s. Mm -hmm. Fear Factor. Oh, it's coming yes. Back. Fear Factor. Yes, Fear Factor. Which, of course, if you don't know what Fear Factor is, it's these stunts where it, you win money if you do these crazy stunts. One of which but it makes is you scary. always one of which is always like eating something terribly disgusting. I think that I think I saw them eat a tarantula once. Yeah, I mean it's it crazy. Horrible. That's mm -hmm. that's not even good. Yeah. Is that I'm mean, nutrition wise? Is that it's you're an gotta expert? Gotta be some protein in there. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be. Oh, right. <laughs> roast it. Maybe rotisserie grilled, maybe. Dipped in chocolate. Dang, there you go. I, 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 everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Favorite person of the day, Matt? Patricia Bishop. She uh, is retired from Cleveland State Psychology there for 36 years. Um, she is, she's teaching adjunct for us right now, and she's, uh, she just found out that she has to have surgery, and so oh, wow. um, she's a wonderful lady, and she is uh, who brought me on there at Cleveland State and, and taught me a lot about what it means to be an instructor or professor there at Cleveland State, so I just want to, she's my favorite person we'll, today. We'll be praying for her, Patricia, Patricia Bishop. Andrea, favorite person? Favorite, lots of favorite people. Um, gosh, in, in Bradley County? <laughs> Unless you want to go with Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is a good favorite yeah. person. She's gorgeous. Put me on the spot. Listen, I've got lots of favorite people. Um, I would say my husband. Oh, my Teddy Lockerbie, people. head coach Walker Valley there Mustangs. Go. There we go. So. Football team. Yeah, that's a good choice. So. We're always cheering for Teddy. My son is zoned for that high school. He'll be playing for Teddy in about eight years. So be Who's ready. your favorite person? My favorite person today, I got two. Jay Chapman, who was uh, the head coach of the soccer team that I coached this year. We finished up our season. He did an amazing job. And Andrea and I are actually in Sunday school together. Ron England is our mm -hmm. Sunday school yep. teacher and facilitator. Yep. Awesome. And Ron does a great job. It's just a wonderful blessing to, to our community and my family in particular. So those are my favorite people today. Oh, all right, cool. Excellent. Well, we're gonna wrap up. I'm gonna give a slow segue to give Jennifer James, our Canadian friend, 
uh, an opportunity to wind us down, kind of cue the music. Jennifer, uh, and thanks for joining us this morning. It's beautiful Tuesday morning, 7.30 a.m. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next week. You know it.